you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. I'm loud, aren't I? Thank you. God bless you all. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Praise God. God is good. Man, thank the Lord. Thank you, Tim. Great job as always. Appreciate him and his ministry. Amen. He, he, I'm telling you, not a week goes by that uh, we don't feel the presence of the Lord. And when he shares, then you start seeing it with everybody else. You know what I'm saying? The same spirit that we all have. And it begins to connect. Amen. I just appreciate his sensitivity to the Holy Ghost and allowing the Lord to use him. Praise the Lord. And I thought... You folks, uh, so grateful to have Tim's family with us today. Appreciate you guys. And I thought that little one crawling up here, I, I, I swore it was my granddaughter. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because when they're here, they're everywhere. That's just what kids do. You know, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. So, hey, we're good with it. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, actually, she's better behaved than I am as an adult sometimes. So I appreciate that. Praise God. But kids are great. They are our future. Amen. And uh, the Lord wants to expose them to everything that they they can be exposed to when it comes to the lord so god bless all of you again appreciate you being here good to see uh yes. yvette good to see you guys back her and debbie back from her i don't want to say gallivanting but you know whatever <laughs> yeah, whatever uh, just out and about praise the lord this too you know god bless toby we're just so grateful to see you back and looking good man you look good praise the lord after that uh, accident and injury and for God to keep his hand upon him and bring him back here safe and sound, that's a Amen. great thing. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Michael and Suzanne covering all the electronics and the singing and the preparation and bringing everything together. We appreciate it so much. And all of you for sharing your uh, testimonies and what God's laid on your heart. It just it brings us all together, helps us to see how God speaks through one another and uh, to each of us through each of us. Amen. So that's a great thing. And uh, everybody out there on Facebook and the Internet uh, with us this morning, God bless you. Appreciate you being a part of the service as well. It's just geography. We're not separated by anything but space. Yeah. And uh, God is wherever we are. So we're, wherever two or more we're gathered together in his name, he's in the midst of us. So praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here this morning again. Thank you so much. And now for the painful part. Guy goes into a Chinese restaurant, he orders chicken surprise. How many of you like Chinese? We had Chinese ribs or something, Asian ribs. It wasn't bad. I was getting a little freaked out from the smell, you know, the, uh, what was it? What is it? I don't know, but soy, yeah, soy. Big word. But anyway, it kind of smelled different than ribs. I'm used to ribs, but, you know, barbecue is what I'm thinking. And this all of a sudden went a different direction. And I was a little concerned for a while, but. Turned out all right, praise the Lord. Anyway, guy goes into the Chinese restaurant and he orders chicken surprise, and it's served in this cast iron pot with a lid on it. And the lid keeps popping up on the table, and so the guy, you know, he finally just decides, I got what's going on here? So he lifts the lid and he sees two eyes staring back at him. And so he freaks completely and he hollers for the waiter. The waiter comes back and he says, I, I need an explanation. He says, something weird's going on here. And the waiter says, well, what did you order? And he said, I ordered chicken surprise. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, I gave you Peking duck. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. You know, you see this stuff all the time being advertised for, you know, getting rid of wrinkles and eye bags and all that stuff. You all see that stuff? I've got the perfect way to get rid of my wrinkles. Take off my glasses. And then I, they're gone. It's a miracle. Praise the Lord. They're out of there, praise the Lord. Next. They don't get any better. But a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Praise yeah. the Lord. You know, uh, and I say this Washington, D.C., I'm talking about politicians here. So, But do you know what is printed on the bottom of beer bottles in Washington, D.C.? Open the other end. <laughs> well, speaking of politicians, you know what happens when an idiot moves from Iowa to Washington, D.C.? Both become smarter. <laughs> That's good enough. Praise the Lord. God is good. 
Amen. And uh, I appreciate so much everything you guys were sharing because it does speak to what I want to talk to you about this morning, what I feel like the Holy Spirit is, is saying. So yes. let's begin with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 7 and 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Praise the Lord. He's a covenant God. And those that are in covenant with him, he keeps that covenant. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 4, verses 23, uh, excuse me, 4, 22 through 26. Galatians 4, 22 through 26. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. He that is born of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So he's saying religion, or the Jewish religion at that time that he was speaking of, was keeping people in bondage because of the law, because of their need to perform, their responsibility to the covenant, and that first covenant, right? So look at uh, verse 31 now. So then, brethren, we are not of the bondwoman, but of the free. Chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So to grasp uh, covenant is to, if we really understand it, it's a full knowledge of what God wants to do and the promise or the assurance, amen, that it's going to be done. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So when God created man in his own image and his likeness, it was so that we would have a life as similar to God as possible here on earth. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So all God wanted man to do was believing. Yes. What, what a person believes moves us. It, it's what rules our, our life, our, our behavior, amen, our whole being. Yes. And so salvation can only be by faith. Yes. Amen. The first great work of God was to get man to believe him. Praise the Lord. And so the main way that God's grace awakened and strengthened faith was the covenant. All right. So his covenant was always a revelation of his purpose. His covenants were always based on what it was he was wanting to do, what it is he wants to do. Amen. And it was a promise. Amen. That God was willing to work in the people that he made covenant with. This is what Don and all y'all were talking about here earlier is he wants us to be aware that everything he wants to do, he wants to do it through us, in us. Amen? And that's what the covenant is for, to help us to realize that we don't have the ability to do these things ourselves, not in the flesh, not in the natural. So we have to be willing to trust in him that he will move us or lead us and guide us by the Holy Spirit so that we'll be where we need to be when we need to be there in order to do what it is God's wanting to do. We are his body, right? Yes. And so that's what covenant really is about. It was meant to be a link, amen, between man and God, amen, in expectation and hope. It was to connect us back with God with the idea that if we're back with God, we have everything to be hopeful. Yeah. Amen. We have every reason to have expectation for the things that God has said Amen. he would do. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Look at Isaiah 54 and verse 10. Isaiah 54 and 10. He says that the mount, for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. So we got a lot of crap going on right now with mountains being blown on, you know, trees being blown down, houses being blown up, all kinds of crazy stuff with the weather and all, right? And he says, the mountains will depart, the hills will be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that has mercy on thee. So the fulfillment of every covenant promise, the, 
the guarantee of every covenant promise is more sure than any mountain. Amen. Y'all been to Colorado or, or, you know, even like Tim's talking about down in, through the Ozarks and into uh, Oklahoma, there's, there's the mountains. And, and uh, so you see those and they just look, they're like the ocean. Yeah. They're just overwhelming. You see, it's just beyond what you can imagine. It's just huge, you know, especially if you're from Iowa or one of these states that's pretty flat. It's amazing. But God said, can you imagine moving that? Can you imagine moving the Rocky Mountains? Well, my word is more sure than them. They could be moved, I suppose, with enough explosive or enough bombs or whatever it might take. But his word will not change. He's telling us the things that we look at to see that are immovable, that are uh, impossible to be dealt with. My word is more sure than they are. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. The greatest lack of faith is that we really need more God. Yeah. We don't need more religion. We don't need more rules. We just need more God. We need yes. more of that relationship, yes. Yes. amen, that God wants us to have. Yes. I mean, the problems in the world, they're man-made. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The devil has to have somebody to work with yeah. just as God does. Sure. And so we're dealing with issues that are not human issues. I mean, the in the sense that it's not motivated by human beings. It's motivated by the enemy who wants to divide. Right. To divide and conquer. You know, I mean, that's the thing. In any relationship, I don't care if it's me and a guy that lives down the street or me and my wife. Right. Amen. He wants to create divisions. And believe me, I've been married for 40 years, over 40 years. And uh, they come. Those divisions will come, right? I mean, there's things that will rise up that will just make you want to slap your mom, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right or your spouse <laughs> although I don't do that I have to say the thought has gone through my head but so just I'm saying that's what the devil does he wants to have us angry with each other he wants us to hate each other he wants us to find fault with each other amen anything to keep us from coming together and the one thing the one thing that will unite all of humanity is Jesus Christ yes. is the love of God yes. amen I mean, there is no, Tim said it so perfectly, there is no difference. I mean, we can look at any number of things. I mean, I'm not going to get into all of it, but the truth is we, at our core, who we really are, we are identical. We are all the same. Yeah. We are all born of God. We are yes. his offspring. Yes. But the problem is until we can see that. We're always nitpicking with every little thing that we can find. I don't like the color she dyed her hair. I don't like this. I don't like that outfit. I don't yeah. like anything to just create something to be upset about yeah. and to dislike somebody. And you don't even know that somebody. Right. You're, you're just looking at, a, at the outside of something. Like yeah. Don said, he looks in the mirror. Who are you? Yeah. I mean, we all ask that sometimes. I mean, yeah. who, at, at my core, who really am I? Yeah. I know I this you know, to her and this to somebody else, but... Who, who am I really? Right. We are the righteousness yes. of God in Christ. That's it. Amen. We are, we are one with Jesus. It's Christ in us, yes. the hope of glory, the hope of God being revealed, the hope yes. of God being seen in this earth through yes. human beings. Because yes. that's how he's going to be seen if he is. Yep. Amen. And so we need to have a, a closer relationship with God. The only way we can have that closer relationship with God is to feel like we are accepted by him. To know, I mean, if you've got issues, it's hard to be intimate. It's hard to be close. It's hard to, to share, right? right? It's only when we know we're accepted. And he says we are accepted in the beloved. It's the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's the thing that helps us to grow up into the full stature of Jesus. Jesus knew he was loved to the Father. He knew that he and the Father were one, right? And so he went about doing what he saw his Father do. We struggle with that because we're still seeing too much of Nathan, you know, too much of you, too yep. much of whatever. Yep. And, it, and it causes us to doubt yep. that God would use us. Yep. But here's the bottom line. God doesn't see you the way I see you. Right. He doesn't see me the way I see me right. or the way you see me. He sees me, as has been said, as Jesus, yes. his son, his child, his daughter, right? Yes. He sees us as his offspring, yes. the same way he saw Jesus. Amen. Now, I know that's... You know, that sounds like, you know, how can you even think to say that? That's blasphemous. Well, that's what they accused Jesus of yes. when he said, I and my father are one. Yes. Now, what has God told us? We are his offspring. Yes. We are his children. Yes. Amen. He created us in his image. 
we've got to get this thing settled with us because it's already settled with God. Yes. It's settled. The Word of God is settled in heaven. The problem is getting to settle down here where we are. Amen. Where we can get past our own humanity, yeah. amen, and see the divine or the spiritual reality of who and what we really are. Yes. That's what's eternal anyway. That's what's going to live on. Yes. And that's what's so important, amen, that we understand. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Remember he said, now, uh, there's two things going on here. There's a religion, and then there's a relationship. And he said, if you're in the religion, you're in bondage. Yeah. Because that religion is going to demand you to do things that you're really not capable of doing naturally in the physical, right? Now, they didn't have the Holy Spirit under that first covenant. The Holy Spirit would move on people, but he could not dwell within them because it was sin. So Jesus had to come, die shed his blood, be resurrected for our sin to be yes. dealt with. Now, the sin's been dealt with, so there's no more issue as far as God's concerned with us as believers in terms of sin. It doesn't mean we can't do stupid stuff, because we do. Yeah. But it just means God doesn't look at us right. in the same way he looks at the unbeliever. Right. He looks at us as being the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. It sounds too good to be true, because it is in the natural. But it is the truth. It is what yes. the Word of God says. He says, stand fast, therefore. Okay, fix yourself in this truth. The truth that you have been accepted by God. That you are the righteousness of God. That you are his offspring. He said, stand fast in that. Therefore, we live in a covenant of grace. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. What, what was it he did? Grace. He brought grace. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He set you free from you. So don't go back and let you be the author of everything that goes on in your life. Yes. Because we got emotions. We've got attitudes. We, yes. we can get upset. We can get angry over stuff that we don't know the whole picture. Right. Exactly. right? We just know what little piece of it is touching us and that we can get all upset and aggravated and not even know what it is we're right. upset about. Mm -hmm. Amen? So stand fast therefore. We, this covenant, the time that we live in, is the covenant of grace. To live any other way is to be nuts, is to be crazy, because you're giving up the one thing that he's given us to set us free from our labor of trying to be the perfect me, the perfect you, whatever it is, and we always fall short, and then we feel condemned, and then we get you know, all bummed out, and we think, well, see, God can never use me because I just screw up all the time. Not in his eyes. No. Not in his eyes. Amen? Galatians 5, 4. Praise the Lord. So Paul says... You know, you've, you've fallen away, or you, you've fallen from the grace. He's talking to these Galatians who were going back into Judaism or back into the religious rituals and everything that they had come up, been delivered out of. Amen. And so Paul says, Christ has become of no effect unto you, so he can't do you any good. Because whosoever of you are justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. Now, he doesn't mean that in the sense that uh, whenever you get uh, trying to do something yourself to to help God out, you know, to, you know, like God will tell you, he'll give you a promise, and then we go out and try to make the promise come yeah. to pass. Yeah. It's, it's trusting in him, yeah. and then acting on what the Holy Spirit leads us to do is the way we're supposed to operate, amen? So this isn't a final falling away. Paul still addresses these people as Christians, so he's not saying you're, you're you know, you're all going to hell. What he's saying is you're not going to get the benefit of this covenant. Right. You're, you're, you're going back to the covenant before where it was all about what you did. Yep. Yeah. How you perform. Amen? But they had wandered from, this, from the sanctification of grace, mm -hmm. which sets us apart or sets us apart to God. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so and that's where we get the victory. That's where our victory is, is in Christ. Yes. It's not in my effort. Listen, we, we came from a, and God bless them, uh, we had a, got a lot of revelation, a lot of good uh, blessings and, and understanding of Scripture, but we came out of the Holiness Pentecostal Church. And I'm talking... Strict clothing, attire, the whole works, you know, and, and uh, all of the rules, all the rituals. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, we had some rules. We, we, we could put Judaism to shame. <laughs> I mean, when it came to th throw your TV out, you know, get rid of the TV, get rid of all your rock and roll records and all that stuff. I gave them all to my neighbor. My pastor asked me what I did with them when they, I first got into the church and they were talking about TVs from hell and all this stuff. And so I got rid of them simply because I knew something had happened. I'd had an experience in the Lord, so I figured it must all be true, and I'll just go with it. And he said, well, what would you do with your TV? I said, well, I gave it to my neighbor because I figured he's going to hell anyway. He might as well have a good TV, right? <laughs> That's what I thought at the time. Anyhow, 
praise the Lord. I actually did, didn't I? And I had some great albums. I did a lot of rock and roll stuff, blues, and, and uh, man, they'd be worth a fortune today. I wonder if he still has them. <laughs> so it's not a final falling away. It's just their sanctification, right? Now, here's the deal. As long as grace, and this is what happens in the church, because we know in the Christian church, we talk about grace. That grace is how people are saved. But we don't carry it beyond that. It's just about salvation. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with a lot of people, all of us to some degree. We have this issue is that as long as, as long as grace is seen as mainly connected with just being forgiven or being pardoned, amen, and, uh, and just being born again, then we, we're no better off. I mean, we're going to go to heaven, but in this life, we're going to struggle with all of the issues because we're not depending on grace or the goodness of God. We're depending on that to get us to heaven, but everything else we got to do. Yeah. Right? I mean, most churches you'll hear, yes, it's by grace that you're saved. You know, you, you repent and then you're born again. But now, you got to get your act together and you need to stop that. You need to stop this. You need to get this. You need to go there. You need to just do this. And all, and all, and all of a sudden, it all comes back to us again. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that grace is provided for is when I die. <clears throat> But here it's up to me. I gotta be righteous. I gotta be holy. I gotta be, you know, super spiritual. I gotta be all these things that I'm not capable of being. Amen. And yet it's placing a demand on me that I can't meet. And that's the problem is we haven't allowed grace to continue on in our lives the way it's supposed to. That's what Paul's talking about here. He said, having uh, been born of the Spirit, are you now so foolish? Galatians, that you're going to go back to the flesh, that you're now going to go back to you doing this stuff, yeah. having been delivered from that, having been yeah. set free by grace, now you're, going to, now you're going to, instead of continuing on in grace and trusting in the promises and the blessings of God, now you're going to go back and try to right. work this thing out. Yeah. And that's what they were doing, and that's what he was telling him. Jesus has no impact in your life that way. He'll have no effect in your life, only in your death, right. only when you physically die. But in the meantime, he wants to be your all in all. He wants to be yes. everything that you have yes. need of. He's the only means by which we can get it. Right. Right. Amen. And so uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 8. And that's what happens. I mean, that's what's happened with the church. And we're not, I'm not against churches. You know, I mean, you know that. But it's just that it's so frustrating for people to get born again and feel so excited and happy and set free. I mean, I know how that's how I felt when I got saved. And yet, it wasn't 24 hours. On it. They had a list of rules and regulations yeah. that I hadn't even dreamed of. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, it wears you out because when you fail, you can't share that with anybody or you'll be excommunicated. Right. You know, I mean, when, you, when you don't keep all the rules, they don't want to have anything to do with it. And you, don't, and you know that, so there's, it's more peer pressure than it is Holy Spirit. Yes. You say, well, it's conviction of the Holy Spirit. No, it's not. It's the no. thing the Holy Spirit comes to convict us of is our righteousness. Yes. He doesn't come to convict us of sin because we've, that's already been dealt with. I'm talking about believers. It's already been dealt with by Jesus. Yeah. So God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So obviously he's talking about something besides just heaven. Yeah. Yeah. So he said God is able to make all grace abound toward you so that you always have all the sufficiency in everything so that you can abound to every good work. Right. So he wants you to prosper. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be, you know what I'm saying, so that he can use you. Yes. I heard it said the other day, and I think it's so true. Every one of us are ministers. We know that the scripture says you're all kings and priests, yes. right, under the new covenant. Yes. So we're all ministers. We just have a different, we just have a different place to minister. Yes. So he gives one person this job or that job or this neighborhood or that neighborhood. Why? Because you're a minister. Yes. And he needs a minister in that location. So the job... I mean, it could be anything. It doesn't matter really what the job is. It's just the means by which God gives you access to minister. Yes. Right. Yes. Praise the Lord. Right. Yeah. Again, we, we make it just about a paycheck. Yeah. And, of course, we've got to have a paycheck. You know, we've got to live. But the truth is, if we operated in the anointing that we have as ministers in the job place, yeah. we're going to kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Not only are you going to be blessed in that location, in that job, but you're going to be a blessing. Yes. 
Amen. You can't be a blessing without being blessed. And that's what God wants us to understand. Wherever we are, it, we may not be there next month. We may not be there next year. But wherever we are, yes. if we're doing what God has placed us there to do, we're going to be successful. And God's going to provide. He's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Praise the Lord. So any accomplishment, any accomplishment, this is what I'm saying. Any accomplishment, any positive thing in our life is the result of ministry. Yes, it is. It's the result, amen, of faith yep. and grace. Yep. Yep. Amen. When we, get a, when we get a breakthrough, whether it's a job, whether it's finances, whether it's health or healing yep. or whatever it might be, it's because of grace yes. and faith. It's because yes. we believe. I mean, it would have been real easy, yep. right, with your situation to go, oh, my God, yep. he's dead. Yep. He's going to die. Yep. Right? Because people would say that. Yep. It's serious, you know. I mean, who knows? It could have all kinds of brain damage. It would be all these... Yep. And we start saying this crap and then wonder why it is that we get this. Right? right? But standing on the Word of God, yes. even in the face of that, even yes. in the face of, yes. of, of, of contradiction, yes. the Word of God will prevail. Yes. Hey, man, I've seen it I, in my life and, and jobs and different things yes. I've had over the years. I, I, I was uh, selling real estate a short period of time. I had to get a real, realtor's license. I can remember sitting in the living room reading this stuff thinking, I have no idea what any of this means. It's like reading a foreign language. Literally. So I'm thinking, you're going to look like an idiot. You'll be lucky to sign your name at the bottom of the application, let alone answer any of these questions that they've got on here. And it was all online, and I was never a huge uh, computer geek, but nevertheless, I prayed the night before this. I didn't know any more after three or four weeks of the study than I did the day I opened the books. Honest to God, I didn't. So I'm praying, I'm thinking, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, you're going to have to get me through this test because I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I took the test and I got like an 80-something. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the top or, uh, upper level of the passing uh, to get the license. Now, I never did use it. Mm -hmm. But you know what I found out later? It was just the Lord just showing me, you want to trust me? There's nothing that's impossible here. Right. You, don't, you know you didn't know anything about right. those questions they were asking you, and yet you yes, got you a higher see. score than yes. some with far more IQ than you yeah. have and more knowledge of the industry. Yeah. And yet I got a higher score and never used it. But it was more about God trying to encourage me yeah. that all things are possible. If you'll believe me, I can yes. get you through yes. anything. Yes. You just got to trust me. Yes. Amen. And so Galatians chapter 5, let's go back there again, 17 and 18. Galatians 5, chapter 17, or excuse me, verses 17 and 18. Praise the Lord. Yes. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And the, this is just what Paul was talking about with the Galatians, and also with the two, the allegory of the two different covenants, or the two different uh, uh, religious situations. He says, the flesh, or the natural man, always struggles with the spirit, because the natural man thinks he's responsible. I need to do this. I need to be better. I need to be good. I need to do this. I need to not do that. I need to do all these things. And so there's this constant battle. The flesh is saying, you need to rest in Jesus. Mm -hmm. You need to shut up and trust the Lord and say what he's saying about the situation instead of what you're thinking, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they, they, there's a battle always there. And these are, they're con because they're contrary to one, one another. Exactly. This is natural. It's physical. It's mm -hmm. temporary. Yeah. But what's inside here is supernatural. Yes. It's divine, amen, and it's eternal. Yes. It, it doesn't deviate. It's like God. No variableness nor shadow of turning. It's the same all the time. From the moment yes. we got born again throughout eternity, who we are in Christ does not change. Yes. We're perfect. Yes. It's just this thing that constantly is on a roller coaster, praise the Lord, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Paul talks about that in Romans 7. The, the thing that I want to do... Seems like I can't ever do it. Mm -hmm. The things that I don't want to do is what I end up, seems like I always end up doing. Mm -hmm. Who can help me? Right. And finally, at the end of Romans 7, thank God for Jesus Christ. Right. And Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation. Right. right? So, if you're led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. In other words, you're not subject to those rules and regulations. Now again, it sounds like we're getting the pass. And the truth is, you are. Yes. But that pass is what is to motivate us to get closer to God. Right. 
not to try to take advantage. Because no. the fact is you can't really take advantage of a free gift. It's like Jesus said, if they ask you for your coat, give them your cape, your cape, uh, cape too. Yep. In other words, don't make them feel like they're begging or they're, they're asking, that they're getting something because of their situation, just simply because you're generous. Yep. This is God. Yep. This is how God works. We think we got to come pleading and begging, oh, God, you see my situation? You know, he knows it all. Yes, he does. But he wants to just be able to give it to us yes. without us feeling like we manipulated him somehow right. or, or made him get him on a guilt trip so that he would give me something, right? right? No, he wants us to realize he just wants to, just like we are with our kids or our grandkids. Grandkids yeah. even more than kids. Because kids, usually you're having kids when you're struggling. You know, I mean, you're still trying to make a living. You're trying to make, pay the rent, pay the house payment, whatever it is. And you don't have the same time to relax and enjoy them. And you're trying to correct them. You're trying to help them to become, you know, reasonable adults. Grandkids, you don't care. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean. I just say it. But with grandkids, you don't have to feel the same kind of pressure. Yeah, right. You can just enjoy them because you've lived through some stuff now. And you know, oh, this too will pass. You know, if, if we keep solid here, they'll be all right. They'll, they'll, they'll come out of this. They're just being a brat because they're two, you know, or, or just because they're that age, you know, whatever. So we can enjoy them a lot more. That's the way God is with us. Yeah. As Tim says, you know, he's, he, we, my grandkids are always drawing some little picture or something. Who knows what it is? I mean, I have no idea. Some, it's, it's kind of scary if you got looked at it from a psychological <laughs> a rough test. So anyway, but that's the way God is. We stick them on the refrigerator so when they come over, they go, ah, Popo loves my picture. Yeah, he loves you. And that's what God does. That's the way God is with us. He wants us to know, you know, your attempts here at trying to impress me doesn't work. It's just who you are that impresses me. It's just that you are my child yes. that impresses me. It causes me to want to yes. bless you and be favorable to you. Amen? So here's what he's saying. If you're led of the Spirit, you're not operating under your own strength. That's the easiest way we struggle sometimes with, oh, is that the Holy Ghost? Isn't it the Holy Ghost? I'll tell you what, if it's the Holy Ghost telling you you've got to do this, it's not the Holy Ghost. That's you. That's your own mind. That's your own uh, kind of behavioral way of looking at life. Mm -hmm. When God says, you need to relax. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is throughout the Bible when, when God said, look, I give you the promised land. It's yours. Just go and take it. Yeah. What did they say? Oh, no. We can't beat those people over there. He, he never said anything about them beating them. Right? Yeah. He said, I'm giving you the land. Right. I'll take care of the enemy. True. Just trust me and go True. get it. Right? The more yes. they thought about it, yeah. the more they let their intellect, the more they let the, what they, their senses to see, yes. the, the less they realized it was possible. Yes. Yes. Just take what the Word of God is. Yes. What's that? It's a land that flows with milk and yes. honey. It's yours. It's houses you didn't build. Right. It's crops you didn't plant. Right. But it belongs to you. I'm giving life to you. I'm giving yes. this to you. Praise the Lord. Galatians 4 and 9. Praise the Lord. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage, right? So there's only one course of action that you can take. Amen. When you, you need to get back on the path, amen, where you left. Probably in a crisis, probably in something where you didn't see God move initially or immediately. And so you go, well, God, I don't know what to believe. I don't know. Maybe I'm just misunderstanding the scripture. No, that's where you need to go back to, where you stop listening to God, stop believing what God had said, and start listening to your own thoughts or, your, or the television news or whatever it might be. We need to go back to that place. What was the last thing God said? I'm your shield yes. and exceeding great reward. Yes. I am your provision. Yes. I am your heavenly father, right? Go back to that place and start operating from there. When the revelation of this new covenant promise, amen, comes down on us and we see how Christ, that Christ is all and all, amen? Yes. The Holy Spirit in us is all, amen? Yes. And the faithfulness of the, this covenant keeping God is all and in us all. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's every, that is everything. That's all we need to really understand and know. We see that there's, there's one thing to do, amen? In complete weakness, 
We yield ourselves to God. Yeah. That's the revelation. I can't do this. Only God can do this. Yeah. The best thing I can do is acknowledge my inability to do it and trust Him. Yes. Praise the Lord. That doesn't mean, you know, I'm just going to say, well, I'm going to do whatever I want to do and I don't care what the consequences. No, it's just that I realize this challenge is too great for my body, for my right. physical being. Right. I have to trust Him. Yes. I have to put my confidence yes. in Him, not in me, because I've failed too many times. Yes. But He's never failed. Never. Amen. Amen? So there's simple faith is, is just simply counting on God to do what He has said. Yes. Amen? Yes. And look, here's the deal. In Christian life and in Christian experience, there can still be old covenant bondage. Mm -hmm. There can still be old covenant failure. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the people that are born again. Mm -hmm. But also in Christian life and experience, there can be a life that gives in entirely to the new covenant of grace and the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. That's what he performed for us to see, to experience. Amen. Through him. Uh, Romans 8, yes. chapter 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 15. Now, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Yeah. This... This is nothing more or less than the restoration of the original relationship that man had with God. It's no longer on you. It wasn't on Adam until he made it about Adam. And this is taking us back to that very same place. Israel's greatest sin under their covenant was Psalm 78, 41. And that was they doubted God. They didn't believe what he said. They turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. How did they limit him? By not believing him. So they didn't get the benefits that he had for them simply because they didn't believe. Under the New Covenant, there's the same danger. Same thing can happen to us even though we're born again. I'm going to show you four titles given to Jesus in connection with the New Covenant. Isaiah 42 and 6. The Lord have, uh, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. Malachi 3 and 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, and even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Hebrews 7.22. So we think of these things as like a contract or something, which is true, but it's really a person. This, this covenant is a hum, human filled with the Godhead. So by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Hebrews 8, 6. Surety of a better covenant. Yeah. The guarantee yeah. of a better covenant. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Hebrews 9 and 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, or the New Covenant, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Yes. Praise the Lord. So he's called a covenant, or the union between God and man, where the goals of the covenant are worked out in him personally. Yeah. 
Amen? And so in Him, reconciliation between human beings and God is per perfectly accomplished. Yes. Exactly what God wanted. Exactly the way God wanted it. Amen? In Him we find the covenant with all the blessings. Yes. It's no different than God and, and Abraham. God's doing all the cutting and putting the animals out there and then walking down through them and with the lamp, waving the, yes. the lamp, you know. And it's what Jesus has done for us. Yes. He took the whole weight of this covenant. Yes. There's no demand on us but to believe. Right. He keeps the covenant. He's the mediator. He's the reminder. Yes. They're under the covenant. Yes. Remember, you got promises here. Yes. Not that God needs to be reminded, but you understand what I'm saying. Right. Amen. In Him we find all that the covenant has. Yes. Amen. He is all God. He's all everything God. that God has given, yes. and He's the assurance that it has all been given. Yes. Yes. That we already have it. Not that we're pleading and begging and hoping that God will do something. He's already done it. Yes. It's accomplished. Amen. He's called the messenger of the covenant because he came to establish and proclaim that covenant. Right. Amen. And he's the surety of that covenant. Not only because he paid our debt. Right. Amen. But also because he's the surety for us with God that we will fulfill our part. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look, let's go back quickly to Deuteronomy 7 where we started only. I want to read verses 12 through 15. Now this is what we have to understand. Under the old covenant, there were, there were demands placed on us. But Jesus, we just read, he fulfilled all of those demands. Right? So now it's not a question of whether I can do everything right. It's a question that Jesus has already done everything right. And I have access. I have a right. I have an inheritance. And here it is. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if you hearken unto these judgments. Now, I didn't, but he did. And then I believed in him. So it's accounted to me as righteousness. Amen. As though I had done it. So, and keep them and do them that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto the fathers. Now, Jesus is that covenant. He has established that covenant. And he's saying, I am the answer to everything yes. you have need of. Yes. Amen. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb, the yes. fruit of thy land, the fruit of the corn, thy wine, thine oil, the increase of thy kind, the flocks, the sheep, the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Yes. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness yes. and will put none of the evil diseases in Egypt which thou knowest upon thee that yes. will lay them upon all them that hate you. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Tim's right. Don't mess with his stuff. Yeah. His people. Praise the Lord. So finally, the covenant was established in his atoning blood, and it's administered, and it's applied by him. And it's entered into only by faith. Yes. Faith in him. Yes. Praise the Lord. So it's only by and through the power of his resurrection life and his never-ending intercession, the new covenant is Christ, all in all. Yes. Everything. Nothing we can do to add to it. Nothing we can do to take away from it. The only thing we have to do is faith. That what he says, he will do. Yes. Amen? Yes. Romans 5.20. You're not under the law. You're under grace. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more about it. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. The, in, the new covenant is entirely a covenant of grace. Yes. Completely, yes. totally. Yes. I know I'm, I'm repeating stuff that we all know, but here's the deal, and I'll get to it in a minute. Okay. I hear it, I think I know it, then i got to go live it. Yep. Yep. Right? Yes. That's where the revelation meets the road, you might say. Yes. Right? Because we think we have intellectual understanding and that means that we have revelation. No, it doesn't. It just means we've got some intellectual understanding. But yes. how to apply that? See, this is the way with universities and schools and all, everything else. We talked about a little bit about education. But that's the deal. You go to school, you get educated. So you know a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But can you do any of it? Yeah. I mean, can you actually apply it in a way to life that's going to be beneficial to you? 
I mean, I got to tell you, 90% of what I, and I'm not against education by any means, but 90% of what I learned in school hasn't right. done a thing for me. No. No. Right? I mean, it was, it was going out and living life and then figuring out how can I make that fit that's true. my life. Exactly. Right? So that's what God's trying to get us to understand. This, this is great. Mm -hmm. It's great. But just to be able to know this, yeah. and we've got university professors teaching theology that don't even know Jesus. No. Don't even believe in being born again, but they can read you, they can quote you scriptures from yeah. now till Jesus comes up, right? So we're not under the law. This is it's meant to be a manifestation of the riches and the glory of his grace. That's what our lives are supposed to be. Amen. And by grace working in us. Amen. When when grace is working in us, all of the promises can be fulfilled. When grace is working in us, we can experience everything that God has guaranteed. Amen. John 1, 14 and 16 says, uh, He is the Word. The Word became flesh, dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. Right? The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. And verse 16, and of His fullness. Now, what did He just say? Grace and truth. That's Him. That's him. And of his fullness have all we received. Yes. And grace yes. for grace. Yes. Meaning, it, you know, it, grace isn't just to get you saved. It's no. grace for grace. For grace till the next obstacle, till the next mountain, yes. till the next deed, till the next yes. situation. It's never ending. Right. Grace for grace for grace for grace. Until you make it about you. Right. Yeah. Amen. So what the law demands... Grace supplies. Whatever the law required, Jesus fulfilled it for us. So what all, all the promises that we have under the old covenant, they're ours now. Because Jesus fulfilled that old covenant. Amen. He fulfilled all the demands of that covenant so that we could live entirely under the new covenant, which is all about him and not about us. Well, it's just about our faith in what he has already accomplished on our behalf. Yeah. Seeing ourselves as God's children, as God's beloved. Yes. I mean, this is so hard because none of us had perfect childhoods, I'm sure. Maybe yours was a little better than mine. I, I wasn't from a huggy, touchy, lovey family. I mean, in the sense I know that they loved me probably, but there was not much expression of that. You know what I'm saying? They provided and, and, and that. But they're different generations are different, right? That's why I'm a hugger. That's why I'm kissing. Why? Because... I suppose because I didn't get much of that as a kid, and now it's my way of letting people know, hey, I really do care because I guess I wondered as a kid, did anybody care about me? You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to make this about me. But I'm just saying that's the difference between having a, a, a knowledge of the love of God for me to know how much he loves me, that no matter how much I screw up, it's not a whipping and go to your room, right? It's a hug, and here's a blessing. I'm serious. We have, we have such a problem of relating to God the way we relate to people, and it doesn't work. He just loves us with a love that is without understanding, beyond our comprehension. No matter how nasty I am, I can come boldly to the throne of grace. I can know that not as he's going to be sitting there going, well, I've been wondering how long it would take you to get over here and apologize. No, come. He's like the prodigal son's father running to us, amen, even when we screw up, not asking for excuses, not asking for apologies, just saying, you're still my kid. You're still my child in whom I am well pleased. I love you. You can't undo my love for you. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 1 and 7. And this goes to, uh, on with what I have been talking about. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. But it's not only at the point of salvation when we receive God's favor, but it's through every moment of our life. Every day, all day. We owe everything to grace yes. and to grace alone. Amen. Grace is a person. We've all heard it. It's Jesus. Yes. He's the covenant. Yes. He's everything. He's all in all. Yes. And he is ours. Yes. And we are his. We are yes. one. Yes. Now, either that's true or God's doing something Tim says he can't do. Lie. Yes. 
Right? I mean, if, and if he's lied about one thing, then the whole book's worthless. Yeah. He cannot lie. No. Amen. Romans 5, 20 and 21. We've got to, I mean, okay, I, I appreciate uh, Peter wanting prayer for the next generation. Listen, if we pray for the next generation the way the previous generation prayed for us, I'm not, I'm not ungrateful for their prayers. I'm just saying they were praying in ignorance a lot of this. was out of ignorance. They didn't understand all that God had for us. We need to raise this generation up in the love of God, in the mercy of God, in the grace of God, in the knowledge that God loves them, that they are perfect. That they are loved. Yes. That regardless of what the neighbor might say. Or regardless of what somebody else might say. Regardless of somebody else's judgment. They are just human. Yes. They don't know sick them. God has declared you righteous. God has declared you beautiful. God has declared you his child. And bless God you are if you can receive it. Praise the Lord. And anybody and any of us who can't see that and can't cooperate with that. We're operating under the law. We're operating under human understanding. And it'll get us nothing but more trouble. More problems. Amen? More of the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace run, reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise God. They which receive the abundance of grace... The scripture says we'll reign in life by one Jesus Christ. We'll rule and reign. Yes. Yes. Amen. So even with all the grace abounding to us, we need to be led by the Spirit. Yes. But how can you be led by the Spirit if you think He's mad at you all the time? Exactly. Maybe He's going to punish me. Maybe I'm going to have a bad accident. Maybe something negative. I mean, it's like good luck, bad luck. It's like a crapshoot or something. That's not the way this works. No. It's confidence in His goodness, in His mercy, in His grace, in His love. Amen? 1 Corinthians 1.30. The only way we can be led by the Spirit is by faith in the promises. Because the Holy Spirit will not lead you away from the Word. He'll only lead you by the Word. He'll bring all this to your understanding. He'll reveal this truth to you. But if you're trying to Say, well, you know, I'm not going to get blessed because I acted up last night. That's not the Holy Spirit. No. He's, not going to, he's not going to be a part of that. Right. You have to agree yes. with what the Word of God says for the Holy Spirit to lead you, Amen. for Him to be able to bless you. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. 30, verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, yes. sanctification, and redemption. Yep. He has made unto us. Yes. Yes. Yep. Praise the Lord. We are holy in Christ. Yes. When are we holy in Christ? When we believe it. Yes. As we believe it, as we receive it, as we yield ourselves to the truth, we become. Yes. That's what he's talking about. Being raised up together into the full stature of Jesus. When does that happen? When we start believing right. what he said about us. Right? right? Now, I know it's, it's so easy to think, okay, yeah, but that's just opening the door to Pandora's box. I mean, it's going to be people just going crazy and doing all kinds of stupid yeah. stuff. I'm telling you, yes, but it's no different than a kid. When you raise him up, Right? And you let him know you love him. You let him know we care about you. You're important. You have yeah. value. You yeah. have worth. Yeah. And then they go off to their first job or their first apartment yeah. or off to college. Yeah. Guess what? They'll probably do something stupid. Because all of a sudden there's freedoms and lack of accountability yeah. that they haven't experienced before. Right. But here's the deal. Train them in the way they should go, yep. and they won't they depart from it. Yeah, they may deviate, right. but they'll come back. And that's exactly what God is saying to us. Yes, you, you might act stupid once you find out yeah. that grace is sufficient, and you know, I'll give you more grace no matter how much you screw up, but eventually you're going to realize, yeah. Yeah. listen, he was trying to lead me into yeah. something far better than just this momentary time yeah. of fun or yeah. excitement or whatever it might be. 
Why? Because we know he is faithful to his word. He will accomplish what he has said. Amen? So, yeah, there will be some behavior. But we can't focus on the behavior. We have to focus on the promises. That's the only way for the behavior to change. It's the only way for us to come out of our flesh and into the spirit. In the flesh, we find ways of dealing with adverse situations. Right? Sometimes it's anger. Sometimes it's just cuss and carry on and whatever. Sometimes it may be drugs. Sometimes it may be alcohol. Sometimes it may be, you know, pornography. I mean, I don't know. It could be anything, but it's just something of a release, a way of finding escape from my failures, from my self-condemnation. And God is saying, okay, I get it. I know what, I understand why you're doing it, but that's not beneficial. It's not helpful. If you would really trust in my love, if you would really trust in what I have for you, you would not need that anymore. Right? You, you could be confident that I'm going to take care of you because I love you. Not because of what you do or don't do, but because I just love you. Period. Amen? So, 2 Corinthians uh, 2.13. Now, these are these things... Living in the real world, it's hard to get your head around it sometimes, right? So I had no rest in my spirit because I found not Titus, my brother, but taking leave of... No, 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 that's not right. Uh, 2 Thessalonians. Did I say that? 2 Thessalonians 2.13. Okay, here we go. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Got it? We give thanks for you guys all the time. Brothers, that are loved of the Lord, because God has, from the beginning, chosen you to be His, to be His children, salvation, through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Okay, so we look at that and we go, I don't know, man. My life doesn't really reflect that, so are we doubting it, right? Well, He knows we will, so He gives us another scripture to meet that doubt. 1 Thessalonians 5.24. Well, I doubt it on a good day, but I might doubt it on some other days. Right? But faithful is he that calls you who will do it. If he said it, he's going to do it. You're not going to do it. You're going to have to trust him to do it. Praise the Lord. Amen? So we've got to get past this idea of just harder work or or more discipline is going to make this thing. No. It's more faith, more confidence in God. The entire life in the new covenant is a life of faith. It's the only way it'll work. You come into it by faith, the only way you can live it out is by faith. Faith accepts every promise of the covenant of the excuse me of the covenant and is certain that it is being fulfilled by the words of the covenant. Praise the Lord. The one difference between old and new is that in the new everything is done by God. Everything is done by God. No human gets to take any credit for this. Right. It's all God. Right. And yet, so many of us just don't take that in. We just can't get our heads around it, I guess. And even those that understand it find it hard to live it out. Right. Our humanity, our flesh, our intellect, our senses, they're blinded to our true relationship with Jesus. It becomes about us. It's, it's a work, work, work thing. His inconceivable, omnipresence, omnipotence, working in us every minute, every day. Is that awesome or what? Yes. We struggle to comprehend how he delights, the scripture says, to dwell in us. And work all in us that has to be done there. And when we think we have accepted the truth, we find out it's only a thought that's fleeting. Because the next act, the next stupid thing, the next weird deal makes me realize I haven't really grasped this. I got some intellect about it, I got some understanding intellectually, but I haven't embraced it totally to where. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. This is supposed to be about resting in Jesus. Praise the Lord. 
See, we're just, a lot of times we're just strangers to the knowledge of what God really is. Is he the judge? Is he just the creator? Is he just the ruler? He's love. And he's your loving father. And that's what he wanted. We didn't choose this. He did. Acts 17, 28. We're about done here. Praise the Lord. Acts 17 and 28. But there has to be a major shift in understanding in the church for the last day to be the last day. There's got to be a generation that embraces this. Because there has to be a revival like this world has never seen before he comes. And the closest thing we have to that is the book of Acts. This thing, he said, we're going to do greater works than he did. This this thing is going to be bigger than anything that has ever been recorded. But it has to come through a people who are totally, 100% identified with God and his finished work. Not us, but him. Praise the Lord. For in him, what? You know, here's what he's telling. In him we live. It's in him that we move. And it's in him that we actually be or exist. As certain also of your own poets have said, for you also his offspring. John 5, 19. These are Jesus' words. He's speaking and he says, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you that the Son can do nothing of himself. How many of you are already identified as sons and daughters of the Lord, right? If Jesus couldn't do it of himself, back off. You know, just take a break. You're not going to. The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son. He said, the words I speak are not my words, but they're the words of the Father. I'm only saying what God has said, right? I know we know that, but I'm telling you, it happens. I hear it all the time. Look at this. What's happening to me? What's this happened? This thing's going on. What is it? Look. I know I realize sympathy's good, but you don't need sympathy. You need deliverance. You need to get free of these words that are keeping you bound, amen, in the flesh. Keeping you subject to the consequences of the world around you instead of subject to the promises of God. Yes. Amen. Nothing, let me say it this way, nothing of myself. It's, it's, it's one of, if not the most important keys to the new covenant life. As I believe that God is to work all in me, then I'll see that the one thing that hinders me is me trying to do something for myself. Praise the Lord. As I'm willing to learn from Christ by the Holy Spirit to truthfully say nothing of myself. Not my intellect, not my reason, not my experiences, but the Word of God, what God says. It's a challenge. I mean, I know it is because circumstances are rarely ever going to line up with the Word of God initially. It's trying to suck us back into that Woe is me. You know, where's God? He doesn't care. No, it's a, the, these things ought to quicken us back to the Word of God to immediately say, I'll not have that. By His stripes I was healed. Amen. God supplies all of my needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I've I got to say that when I get the statement from the bank that says you're overdrawn or, you know, the payment's late or whatever it might be, right? Because it's so easy to say, Oh, I, you know, what am I going to do? Get another job. I, I, no. I'm going to trust the Lord. Yes. He is more than sufficient yes. for whatever my need is. Amen? Uh, Nothing of myself. And that's where I get the true preparation to receive everything that God has promised. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen? And the power to accept it. Yep. Amen. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's grace for grace. Yes. I need his grace for me to even be able yes. to accept it, but I have to trust in it. I have yes. to rest in it. Amen? Yes. I'll have the true preparation to receive everything that God has promised. And I'll learn that the whole secret of the new covenant is just one thing. God does it all.
at all. God works all. And the seal of the covenant stands. Last two scriptures. Ezekiel 22 and verse 14. Can thine heart endure? Or can that, your hands be strong? I mean, have you got enough guts? Are you powerful enough in the days that I shall deal with thee? We're, we're living in the days yeah. that we're being dealt with. God isn't bringing this stuff, no. but he's using this stuff, just as Tim yes. said, to raise up a, a body, to raise yes. up a people who will trust him, who yes. will believe him in spite of everything else. Right. So he's asking us a question. It's rhetorical. He really doesn't expect an answer because he knows the answer is no. Yeah. My heart, I'm not, I don't have enough courage for what might come, right? I don't know. Am I, t- am I tough enough? Am I strong? I don't know, and I don't want to find out. Sure. But I, the Lord, have spoken yeah. it and will do it. Yes, yeah. will. I'll give yeah. you the courage. Yes. I'll give you the strength. Remember, Don, we talked about this here a while back. Suppose martyrs take place. If you ask me today, could I be martyred for Jesus? To be totally honest, I'd have to say I don't know. I'd like to think that I would. I'd like to think I'd have the courage, but I don't know until I'm confronted with it. But God says, you don't need to worry about that. My grace will be sufficient. I don't need grace for that today, right? But when the time comes, if I need it, the grace will be there. I'll be able to stand just like those three children in the fiery furnace. I'll be able to say, my God is able. If he does, he does. If he doesn't, he's still God. Praise the Lord. And Ezekiel 17, verse 24. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, have brought down the high tree, have exalted the low tree. The last shall be first. The weak will say they're strong. Right? I have brought down the high tree. I have exalted the low tree. Have dried up the green tree. And have made the dry tree to flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken it and have done it. That's the day that we live in right now. It isn't us becoming stronger trees. It's about him taking the weak things and bringing to naught the things that are. The strong things, the powerful things, the things that are influencing and trying to control. Amen? It's a covenant. And it cannot be broken. It cannot be broken. This is our God. And he's a good God. And he has provided every single thing that we have need of by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And if you can believe that, say amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate your patience. Thank you for enduring the long, dusty road here. Praise the Lord. God is good. Keep that in mind. Keep the fact that God is good and he's on your side. And no weapon formed against you can prosper. God bless you all. Thank you again for being here. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great day.